This is part 39 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss JavaScript event object and its properties. In JavaScript, we've got several events click, mouse over, mouse out, etc. When these events occur, the relevant data about the event is placed into the event object. For example, the event object contains event data like the x and y coordinates of the mouse pointer when the event occurred, the HTML element that fired the event, which mouse button is clicked, etc. Obtaining the event object is straightforward. Now, if you have an event handler associated with the event, when that event occurs, the handler method is automatically called. At that point, the event object is also passed to that event handler method. So we can use that object properties to retrieve the relevant information that's useful for us. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have a button on the web page. Now when we click the button, we want to retrieve the name of the event, which is click, the x and y coordinates of the mouse pointer relative to the vendor, and then the element on which the click event occurred in this case it's button and we also want the element tag name for button we use uh, input tag so the tag name is input so we want to capture all this information about the click event so let's see how to achieve that the first thing we need to do is include the button control input type equals button value equals click me Let's give it an ID of btn. And now let's write a function. Let's name it get event details. Now, this is going to be our click event handler method. So, on click of the button, call this function. So, when click event occurs, this function gets called and at that point the event object is automatically passed into this object. So this function is receiving event object. So inside this function we can use the properties of this event object to retrieve the information that's useful for us. Now what we want to do is display the event name, x and y coordinates, target type and target tag name. So let's create a variable here. Let's call that event details. And the first thing that we want is the event name. So we have the event object. Type property of the event object is going to give us the event name. And then let's append an HTML break so that the x coordinate of the mouse pointer will be on a separate line. x equals event dot client x property is going to return us the x coordinate of the mouse pointer relative to the vendor and then we want the y coordinate so let's include an html break and then y equals event dot client y property should return us the y coordinate of the mouse pointer and then we want the target type that is the element type on which the event occurred and to get that we are going to use the target property of the event object so basically the target property of the event object returns the HTML element which raised the event now we want the type of that HTML element. So I'm going to use type property on the target object, which should return us button in this case. And then we also want the tag name. So target tag name equals event dot target dot tag name property should give us that. So now this variable contains all the event data that we need. Now let's display this event data within a div element. So let's include a div element. Let's give it an ID result div. So within this div tag, we want to display the event data. So within our function, document.getElementById, we pass the ID of the div tag which is result div dot inner HTML equals whatever we have in this event details variable. 
So let's run this now. Now look at this. When we click the button, notice that the event name is click, x and y coordinates of the mouse pointer, target type is button, and target tag name is input. Let's bring the target tag name to a separate line. And to do that, let's include this HTML break here. So when we reload this and click the button, we should have target tag name on a separate line. OK, now let's also retrieve mouse over and mouse out event details. And to do that, we need to associate an event handler for on mouse over. So on mouse over, we want to call the same function. And similarly, on mouse out, we want to call the same function. So let's save the changes. Let's reload this page. And look at this. As soon as I mouse over, we get the event name as mouse over, x and y coordinates, you know, the target type and target tag name. As soon as I mouse out, look at that, the event name is mouse out. When we click the button, so that's the, the event name is click event. And look at this, depending on where I click the button, the x and y coordinates changes. All right. So this is the same example that we discussed just now. Now, this piece of code will not work in IE8 and earlier versions. At the moment, I'm using Google Chrome browser, so it works fine in Google Chrome and all the other browsers. But as far as Internet Explorer is concerned, it's going to work in Internet Explorer 9 and later versions. Let's actually browse this page with Internet Explorer. At the moment, on my machine, I have IE11 installed. So now look at this. When we click, you know, everything works as expected. But if we change the browser mode to IE8, so let's change the mode to 8. And look at this. When I mouse over, we get an error. And what does it say? It says, type you know, unable to get property type of undefined or null reference. So where are we using type? We are using type right here to get, you know, the target element type. Now, it says unable to get property type of undefined or null reference. So basically here, the target property is not supported in IE8 and earlier versions. Now, target property is going to return us the element that triggered the event. Okay, So if we want to retrieve the element that triggered the event in IE8 and earlier versions, you will have to use a different property of the event object, that is SRC element. Okay, So let's write this code in such a way that it's going to work in all browsers, including IE8 and earlier versions. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a check if this event object that gets passed in, if that supports SRC element property. So IE8 has SRC element property on the event object. Okay. Now with IE9 and later versions and all other modern browsers, you know, SRC element on the event object is going to return return undefined. Okay. So if that returns you know, the source element, then we're going to actually create a variable here. Let's name it source element. That is the element which triggered the event. So source element is going to be event dot source element. So this is going to work for IE8. But IE9 and later versions and all the other browsers, they support target property. So source element is going to be event dot target. So now we are going to use this source element variable. So take the source element variable and then here we are going to say source element dot type and source element dot tag name. So let's save these changes. Let's go back to 
Google Chrome first. Let's reload the page. Now look at this. It still works. Mouse over, mouse out, click event, everything works. Now let's go back to Internet Explorer. And at the moment, this is running in IE 11. So it still works. Mouse over works, mouse out works, click works. Okay. Now let's go to Developer Tools, change the browser mode to IE 8. Now look at this. Mouse over works, mouse out works, click works. So now here we have a cross browser solution. Now let's also retrieve mouse move event data. Now let's get rid of all these events and include chest on mouse move. Save the changes, reload the web page. Look at this. As we hover the mouse over the button, look at the X and Y coordinates. They change dynamically. Thank you for listening and have a great day.